Well, it's a good evening in um, Brisbane, Queensland, Australia, and um, it's now nine o'clock, back to normal time in the UK, and um, my co-host Andrina is sitting there in the UK, and she's got this um, amazing guy, Rory Duff, and so um, we'll start the show tonight, and I'll pass it over to Andrina. Thank you, Jeff. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day, wherever you are in the world, or if you're listening to the replay, welcome. And um, on this beautiful sunny Thursday morning here in the UK, it's my pleasure to have Rory Duff um, on the show. Because well, there's so many things I want to ask you. So um, I've heard I've been guided to through different people. Um, get in touch with Rory Druff. He's, you know, he's written books, he does ley lines, he does dousing, he does this, he does that. So here we are. So um, I've read some of your bio and there's lots of little things I would like to ask you. So first of all, um, I would like to say welcome. And would you like to start off how your journey started? Um, what took you on the path? Um, I know you, you've, you did gold mining in Africa and you know, you've talked about synchronicity. So would you like to start from the very beginning of how your life has unfolded to where you are now? Wow. Um, well, <laughs> In the nutshell. Thank, thank, you. thank, you, Jeff. thank you very much for, for inviting me on to, to your show. It's much appreciated. Um, well, where did it all start? And, and um, this is actually made me stop and think a little bit about how we all start our lives and i would invite people to to look back at what their very first decision was in their lives that they made themselves as opposed to other people making it for them and mine was at the age of 13 i was asked whether i wanted to study geology or history and i guess that was a bit of a no-brainer for me really <laughs> but it was my decision <laughs> And I, I started, started studying geology and, and then I just found that the, the teacher was just incredibly enthusiastic and that, that enthusiasm inspired me to, to learn and learning became more easy. So I ended up going to the University of London to, to study geology. Um, but it, 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 uh, it was about decisions and how we make decisions. And, and, and one of the most important things that I discovered not at that time, but later, was how we make a decision-making strategy and what is our decision-making strategy to elicit the truth and how does that change from the way we make decisions on what to eat and drink and things like that. Uh, and uh, so fairly early on, I was beginning to, to look at, well, how do I navigate my way through life? What do I want to do and, and what should I be doing? And, and, and um, it's very easy to get caught up with what other people want you to do. Yeah. Fortunately, I had a couple of things which really helped, and that was uh, synchronicity. Um, yes, the synchronicity uh, and intuition led me to to working in Africa in the gold mines, um, and and life was very different with the reality of living in, in you know and working seven thousand feet underground with death was all around you. Uh, I mean, literally, it, it was commonplace, and uh, you're in danger underground all the time. Um, there's a couple of occasions where, if, if I'd been standing somewhere minutes earlier, uh, I would, or minutes later, I, I'd actually been crushed. Uh, and um, that's the story most people can tell you when they work underground. Mm -hmm. And following from that, you you end up realizing that you suppress your fears. And when you do suppress your emotions, because when you're young, you sort of think you can you can do everything. Uh, you actually you actually surface what surfaces elsewhere is is, is more sort of chaos. And, and for me, it, it started with chaotic living at, at up, up on the surface. To the extent that I was burning the candle at both ends, till I got to the point where I was about to break down. Had it not been for a pretty major synchronicity, where I was introduced to the work of Rudolf Steiner by two separate people on the same weekend. And the fortune, one of them had a whole library of Steiner books, which were probably the only Steiner books for about 500 miles around. <laughs> so, so, 
so that that kind of got me on on the on the initial road but then also there's a senior geologist on the mines uh, called me up and said um come rory we go look for water and uh, i said cool fine and, and i the, the farmers locally used to ring us up to to try and find uh, water 30 40 meters down because they have limestone and then you need to find the, the channels of water there and when we pulled up at this farm he just opened the boot and pulled out these dowsing rods and i'm thinking yeah what <laughs> what's going on and and he said oh we know water's here rory we just don't know exactly precisely where but the rods will tell us and so we did we we, we would douse for, for 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 water for these farmers and arrange for drill crew and of course that was the opening point where you, the, if you didn't get the dowsing right you didn't hit the water but what was quite shocking was that we always got the water. And we used to practice on the mine lawns with sprinkler systems and the pipes. You could actually douse for where the pipes of the water were that fed the, sped, sped the sprinkler systems. And then the feedback there was you press the dowsing rod down under the surface of the grass and you can feel the pipe. Wow. So, so dowsing and feedback, that loop, that learning loop became really interesting. And of course, it opened my whole mind up to what earth is going on here. You know, I, I'm naturally far too curious in my life, and curiosity is 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 wonderful. Um, I found out later in dowsing, it kills dowsing. You have to ask the question, be curious, but then when you go into that sort of uh, mode of, of of getting information back from your subconscious, you have to wipe out all curiosity. You have to increase massive uncertainty, so you're not influencing the results. Mm. Dowsing became this incredible journey. Of, of discovery for me and it led me to further synchronicities which are it, it, so, so for me decision making uh, following synchronicity exploring that and being massively curious start, started me off wow <laughs> and you you obviously never done dousing before didn't even know what dousing was um, I wouldn't say that I didn't know what dowsing well. was. I think I, I sort of labelled it as, as as one of these fringe things. I was sort of embedded within science, at the, and, and I was really fortunate to to study geology at, 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 back in the um, goodness back in the, in the late seventies, um, because it was a it was an emerging science back then, and we were we were already at the cutting ed, levels of research and, and trying to work out what was going on with with the, in the world of geology. So that that added to the sense of excitement when we looked at rocks and finding new minerals um, that was that was uh, absolutely fascinating so so dowsing was just one of these things which were well we don't know about that and i haven't really considered it and, and didn't do too much with it until i came back to the uk when i discovered hamish miller's uh, work on the st michael alignment and finding the michael and mary lines and i'm thinking well, I'm, I'm living, you know, not, not, not far from one of these lines. I was living down in Devon in, in near Exeter. And um, I, I literally went to the church at Crediton, uh, or, or the Holy Cross Church there, and spent an hour walking around this church, <laughs> just, just trying to, OK, well, they're supposed to be here. <laughs> what can I find? And after an hour, I was picking up both lines. And I thought, well, this is cool. Then at the time I was doing Aikido, uh, learning about uh, human energies and, and how to use chi energy to to es essentially um, do some quite phenomenal feats within Aikido. And, and I wouldn't say that I was good, but I was training with people who were phenomenally good at using chi. So I was then looking, well, what is this energy? And uh, in the early stages, I thought, well, it, it could be something to do with gravity. So I, I started off with that hypothesis that this was... Uh, this was uh, moving our gravitational fields and the Earth's gravitational fields, and, and um, just carried on exploring. And then I, I through synchronicity, uh, again, I came across a, a, a chap called Ron Pearson, who was the most amazing scientist you could ever come across. And, and as the synchronicity unfolded, I moved to Chippenham in, in Wiltshire, where which was very close to where he lived. Uh, so I moved from Devon to Wiltshire, and we both had boxer dogs, and we, we spent 15 years together until he passed over. And I was helping him um, with his theories on the creation of the universe. Uh, he had he had it all, uh, but he was just it was a really amazing engineering physicist. And he, he didn't like the Big Bang theory, didn't like the relativity theory, uh, and and set out to try and find the answer to the creation of the universe. And uh, 
he did, but he had this unfortunate side effect. But you know, this this is a university lecturer from Bath University uh, uh, in, in, in fluid dynamics and, 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 and thermodynamics, and, and he was also he, he was a an inventor. He was he was he invented the gas wave turbine, and, th and this this thing he, he he put together from theory and he built it. Actually, built this thing himself. And when he started it up, it ran first time for 400 hours. It's quite unbelievable engineering feat to be able to take something from theory and put it into it. But anyway, this theory on the creation of the universe ended up having this rather unfortunate side effect from it. It explained how intelligence must have arisen that went on to create everything, like some sort of supercomputer at the subquantum level. So for 15 years, I was immersed in, in really challenging science and and, and uh, realizing that relativity is just the most immense hoax that have been that have been put on the human race, because it d denies the background, it, it denies the existence of an intelligence, uh, and and we're beginning to find with the electric universe theory that uh, dark matter, you, you know, they spent billions trying to find dark matter and failed miserably. Over fifty or sixty papers this last year have shown they cannot find dark matter. Black holes are completely unfalsifiable. They are pseudoscience. And if we get rid of relativity theory and we realize actually there is intelligence behind the universe, we survive after death. And this changes everything. And if you think about uh, how we should progress forward, you know, it's only in the last few hundred years that we've been immersed in this science which says, no, when you're dead, you're dead. Your mind is nothing more than brain function. This is rubbish. Yeah. There's so much information that says otherwise, and now we have science that, that has a un, unbelievable science which, which connects up. He has a fully unified theory of quantum gravity, but the physicists won't accept it because it doesn't include, it doesn't need relativity theory. And, and all the physicists which are uh, stuck with these establishments, all their funding is dependent on big military organizations and governments who will not fund anything that, that actually stops the religion of relativity. And, and as soon as we get rid of that, and then we accept that, that we have this intelligence behind the universe that went on to create everything and continually creates things. And that fits with so many of the old sayings and the old cultures and, and even um, with, with explaining things like healing and, and telepathy, all of that is, is completely natural and explained by this theory. And of course, this theory was uh, was massively uh, suppressed by physicists like Penrose and, and, and all that. But it, it provides us, if you like, with this wonderful foundation with regards to what we do. And it begins to explain that this universal consciousness is connected to uh, very, very low vibrations. And, and this began to provide us with an answer of, of what these Earth energies were about and how, they, how they're formed. And, and what do you call that theory? Sorry, what was that theory called? Uh, well, well the, the, it, it's uh, the, the big, big, big breed theory is is uh, is replacing the Big Bang theory. Um, more information is on his website, uh, ronpearson.com. Um, he has passed over now, but uh, he's written six books, which I helped him write, which start from the beginners all the way up to uh, the really deep deep science with mathematics um but um yeah I, I, and my role is in many ways to promote his work this most amazing gentle humble man uh, who reached his 90s and um i was blessed to share so much time with him just helping him understand him and he introduced me to uh so many other things he he, he was asked to, to to join circles uh where, where and we, we sat in circle together with some amazing mediums um he was continually being asked to look at free energy devices so i was i was immersed in the world of, of uh, understanding how this was possible because his theory explained that uh, and again another reason why relativity theory was was heavily pushed and promoted was because tesla had, had discovered how to tap into the free energy in the universe, uh, which would have meant uh, independent energy uh, could be used for for everything, for, for lighting the world, as Tesla has described that he could do. And um, of course, that didn't sit with uh, people like J.P. Morgan. Uh, and uh, and uh, it was all about some small group of selfish parasites wanting to own the world. And, and um, 
<laughs> this is this is the game we're all in right now. But but the mm. the other side of it is this awakening. Where, well, actually, um, well, for me, it was uh, following synchronicity. And, and I guess if there's anything that I would suggest is if we could all do that, we, we we follow this sort of vocational path and, and uh, synchronicity. This is essentially you you get two bits of information from separate sources which are related at a, at a time in your life when you need it. It's like this is how you can be sure this is guidance for you fulfilling your role in life. And if many more people started thinking, well, that's actually, I need to work on synchronicity just to be guided by that. Well, we, the world will be traveling in the direction we need to be traveling. And, and uh, it's an incredibly exciting experience because I mean, when it strikes, it just blows your mind. And, and, um, uh, and it's not just physical things. We connect up in the dream world. And we're, we're, we're in, in a dream group that I'm with, we, we end up having dreams between us and then events during the morning even now, which are connected eh, causally. Uh, and that, that, that is now giving us a collective direction as to where we're going and what we should be doing. So, And, and this matches absolutely Steiner's uh, prediction of moving from an individual consciousness to group consciousness. And this is the awakening, moving from the fifth epoch to the sixth epoch. So we're, we're looking at uh, like one of the, the books I wrote was uh, 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 called Grail Bound. And I'm not to mention how I got onto the, to the Grail subject, because that was a bit of a, a left, <laughs> it came out, a bit of a curve, curve ball that came out. But, uh, but there's this universal prophecy that, that uh, we get snippets from cultures and, and, and different people from around the world, ancient and modern, that are saying the same thing, that we're in this cyclic, uh, this great 12,000 year cycle where, where the energetic environment changes and that changes in our minds it, 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 it mutates ourselves and, and, and it's, it's, it changes the way we view the world and how we, we interact with each other and it's happening right now and, and what, what brought me to this was, was just wondering what on earth are these energy lines doing because they're changing mm. and, and that's probably the time to get back to the energies because you know, being curious when I moved to, to Chippenham and Wiltshire, it was much nearer to, to Avery. And so I thought, well, that's cool. I can I can do some dowsing around the Avery complex. And, and um, there was a particular energy line that meant, was mentioned at the end of The Sun and the Serpent, the book by, uh, by Hamish, which uh, it wasn't one of the, it wasn't the Michael or Mary, but it was another short one that came out from the center of the circle there. So I thought I'd just set out and look for that. And the journey just continued. And I found lines going everywhere. And then I, I had a breakthrough point where there was a line passing right next to my house. And every morning at eight o'clock, I would take the dog out for a walk. And I noticed that the edge of this line was never quite in the same place. And so I thought, well, okay, well, I'll do is I'll, I'll put a, 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 a tape measure in a datum in, in the lawn, run it across the road. And, and every morning I would measure precisely the, the distance from datum where the edge of this energy line was. And, and it, it soon spread to, well, I have to measure the other side at the same time. And what I found was this, this energy line had, had a sort of pulsation. It would widen and, and contract and widen. So I did this for about three months. And I thought, well, I can't, I've got to do it more than just eight, eight o'clock every morning. So I ended up doing it uh, every hour. So I was up at night, <laughs> going at two o'clock and three o'clock and four o'clock. And I began to see that this line had a slow movement one way and then a slow movement the other way. And there's a slide there, I think, that, that shows this uh, side to side movement, which I thought this is incredible. And no one had discovered the side to side movement of these energy lines before. And it that, can I, yeah, can I stop you there? Because that was one of the things I wanted to ask you, because they say, like in Australia, they call them song lines. Yeah. Here is ley lines, um, and then you've got dragon lines. And so I just, from my point of view, I mean, I've been on many ley lines in, in different places. Um, how, do you, how do you know where a line starts and finishes? And... Um, you know, the difference between dragon lines and ley lines, because I don't really know, you know, I know of them and I've worked on them, but I don't really know what the differences are. And, you know, like you're explaining now how you're measuring them. Is that how you started to measure exactly where they are, like through doing a dousing, using a rod and you would get the, the feel of that where it stops? 
or was it intuitively yeah. you knew it's where it stopped um okay there's there's a few questions in there so i need to yeah there is <laughs> but they're all linked <laughs> yeah the, the, the terminology we all use uh soon became obvious to me back then that, that we needed to, to to unify the terminology so we could actually talk to each other about what we were finding uh, and that's one of the reasons which led to the, the, the book the classification of uh, ley lines and uh, earth energies and nodes, which, uh, which I'm going to show you about. But the, the, essentially, um, if, if I start with the terminology, a, a ley line is a pretty straight alignment. It's also called a ley. Now, a ley was the, 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 the straight track, which Alfred Watkins uh, talked about, which is five or six points like uh, stone circles of standing stones, hills, tumuli, uh, churches that are all in a straight line across the map. And, and, and that's a little alignment, that's a lay, sometimes called a lay line. All those are the same thing. To be a true lay, lay line or alignment, you have to have a pair of earth energy lines running along that alignment, okay? So if you're looking at uh, the, the St. Michael alignment that, that uh, 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 Hamish uh, tracked, uh, across the UK, uh, that has the St. Michael energy line and the St. Mary energy line running along it and crisscrossing it over again. So these earth energy lines curve and cross together and curve and cross together. And, and but the alignment itself is just a straight alignment. So um, when you're talking about, uh, for instance, the, the, the rainbow uh, serpent that crosses uh, uh, Australia, that has a, a pair of earth energy lines that run along that alignment. Okay, so um, that if you're talking about a song line, that is another line, uh, another another name for the alignment. If you're talking about the serpents lines or or the dragon lines, these are the same as uh, the alignments. But each alignment has a pair of earth energy lines. And, and what I was discovering is that these energy lines have different groups with different frequencies. And I I, I separated them out uh, with the fact that for instance, the type four energy lines, which I call them, they're, they're the Michael and Mary lines, if you like, they, they have a movement of 12 hours going one way, 12 hours going the other way. So it's te technically it's got like a 24 hour frequency, which which you actually would measure it down in the form of microhertz, which is you know, something like uh, in the region of eight or nine microhertz. It's incredibly slow movement, but it's not the slowest movement in, in, in the universe. I mean, the, the sun, the, uh, uh, the, the, puts out uh, um, there's a study called helioseismology, which actually measures the, the the vibrations of the sun. And these are even slower than, than these waves that we're measuring uh, side to side movement. But, um, so when, you, when it comes to tracking these lines, I was tracking the earth energy lines not, that ran along the alignment. Uh, and initially I just thought, well, do what any geologist does is map them. And uh, I, I, I'm very fortunate that I find it's very easy to know where I am and where I'm going. I, I, I don't use sat nav. I don't need to. I just, I just, I just know where things are. So mapping is in, in two dimensions, by the way, was incredibly easy. I had to map three dimensionally underground and think three dimensionally with regards to fault systems and reefs and where it all was. So I spent six years actually mapping the northern part of Wiltshire to find out uh, where these lines were and what they were doing. And that's when I begin to, to, to study the characteristics and, uh, and, and realize that they have groupings of different frequencies. And then, um, then, it, then it became obvious I needed to study several of them over a longer period of time. And I've noticed that these, these lines, another feature of the different frequencies, the, the lines within a group of frequencies, like say the type three lines, they would all suddenly move exactly in sync and, and the type three lines would all go to one side uh, and then back the other side and they would reach the end of the range of movement at precisely the same time and that would happen in, in harmony for two days for every uh, uh, roughly every eight or eight or nine days they would come into harmony for two days and i'm thinking what on earth is going on here and then another group would have a different harmony period over a longer time. But then the real eye opener was uh, four times a year, every single one of these energy lines all started moving exactly in harmony for about three quarters of a day. And that wow. was 
that was the, that was the day before the solstices and the equinoxes. And I'm thinking, well, that really doesn't make any sense. Why is it the day before the solstices and equinoxes? I mean, the, the, the special days was always the whole solstices and equinoxes. So this was just massively strange. Um, and at that stage, uh, I, I measured these lines on, when I was walking my dog every morning. I, I, I measured 12 lines for 18 months uh, where their wow. positions were. Uh, and begun to understand the, the differences in their movements. Um, and at that point, uh, another another bit of a, a bit of synchronicity struck with uh, regards to uh, Ron and a friend of his, a French medium called Brigitte Rix, uh, sent uh, both Ron and I details from what she'd been reading from a book called Seth Speaks, from, uh, written by Jane mm -hmm. Roberts, which was a, a sold seven million copies back in in, in the seventies. Uh, it was a she was uh, channeling this. Uh, uh, this character called Seth and receiving information about the true nature of reality. And uh, uh, at that point, it was like um, she was explaining things called absolute coordinate points, what Seth was explaining. And I was reading what, what Brigitte had sent us. And, and, and this was just thinking, oh, my goodness, is she's describing nodes, these incredible nodes. But she was saying there was only four of these. Or the, the, the Seth was saying only four of these absolute coordinate points for places of extreme power all around the world. I'm thinking, okay, well, if they're nodes, what's doing this? And at, at, at that point, when uh, I have a very good friend in, who used to live in Devon called Carol Everett, who is just this the most amazing healer. In fact, she's probably one of the few wor world's uh, scientifically tested healers. She was flown to Denki University in Japan, where she was uh, tested by a chap called uh, Professor Yoshi. Yoshi, uh, um, Professor Yoshi, I think his name was, and and, and um, he had a wired up to an EEG machine. She was she was uh, had a patient just been introduced to her, and this patient was just diagnosed that morning, and and there was a thermal imagery scan on the patient, and and she was flown three and a half thousand miles to just test her medical intuitive abilities, and, and within seconds it's like well she has a tumor in her ovary. And you could see it on the thermal imagery scan, which, which Carol couldn't see. This is a red, red color area there. And, and the professor said, oh, we've just flown you all this way, way and we've hardly got any data at all from, from your brain weight. And she said, no, I can get rid of it. And at the distance of two, two meters all the time, so there's no, nothing close. And, and, and Fuji TV actually has the live footage of doing this, um, but they won't release it, <laughs> funnily enough. And in seven minutes, you can see the, the, the reddish area on the thermal imagery scan go back to a normal background boot camp. So she got rid of this tumor, live TV, wired up. And, uh, uh, and you can see that her brain waves on, on the left hand side of her brain. She's completely shut down. It's just the right brain that's working. Uh, and so lovely, lovely lady, amazing healer. And she she, she was living in Devon right on top of this uh, uh, St. Mary line naturally near Crediton and that's where her clinic was and I, I, I was there several times with her and, and doused the line and, and she, anyway so when she moved to Spain uh, about the time I was getting this information from Seth via, via Brigitte and, and Ron uh, she was telling me that she was um, she would found this place up in the mountains with unbelievable energy and I'm thinking yeah but you were on the you were on the Michael, the Mary line, and you're telling me there's more than, than than energy than that. And she says it's off the scale, and then she, she's sensitive to these things. So I began to think, okay, well maybe there's there's something bigger and more powerful than these type four Michael and Mary lines, and um, and that then uh, another friend of mine connected with me uh, called Manique, and he runs a healing practice in in Kerala. And Monique, I mean, I, I took him to, to Avery for the first time, and, and um, he, he's one of these people who can see these energies. And there aren't many of them, but, but goodness me, he could see when the vortices would pop up and then drop, drop away again. Um, and he, he told me about, uh, about Kailash and when he was went there and the energies around my Kailash. So I started, well, okay, if there's, if there's four great places of power, uh, four absolute coordinate points, wh where are they? And that led to the discovery of three emperor dragons that went around the world. And where you have three emperor dragons, which these are type five energy lines. 
where they crossed over were in six places, but two of them were in the oceans. Uh, one of them was Mike Kailash. Uh, one of them was in Spain. Um, and then there was, uh, there was, there was one in New Zealand and, and there was one in, in the Pacific, um, which I won't go into now, but that, uh, at, at, at that point, we, I, I had a, something rather strange thing. I had a, had a, a thing called a, what I call a snake dream, <laughs> and the snake dream because all, all this, all I'd been doing up to now, I was just doing my own research. I, mean, I, was, I was working for a, as a, as a training, a, a, somebody who did training and communications as, as a coach for a large large corporation. I, I was coaching people and, and things like that. So I, I'd done a change from geology, but uh, um, it had allowed me to to drive and, and take a different route on the way home each each day to, to to complete my mapping project to find out where these lines were. But the snake, so it was all my own research. I, I was working with a friend called Keith, and that was really important. Where we actually would check each other's work, and, and he would check my dowsing, and I would check his dowsing. So it's a sort of double blind way of, 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 of progressing uh, forward and learning of what these lines were about. But the, the snake tree um, kind of like told me it's time to sort of talk about it. And at that same time, I was given this sort of message, and, and, and you know, these things happen, that I had to go to Spain to to repair these these this, these emperor dragons, but I couldn't do it on my own, um, and I had to find a group of people to go with. Uh, so that was a bit strange. Um, <laughs> since since I was given also within two months, I had to do it. Uh, at that point, the, the, the universe seemed to take over, and I did a talk in Glastonbury at Positive Living Group down there, and, and uh, I asked, I said, I need help to do something in Europe, but I can't tell you where. And three three wonderful people came up to me afterwards, and one person said, I, I, I feel I'm supposed to be working with you. I, I, it's something to, that being to do with an anchor, but I don't know what that means, and I knew immediately what it was because of what the energy work we had to do. And then one person said, "Is I, I, I think I know it's in Spain. I can see an antenna there." And then he, he joined the group. And then this little lovely man said, uh, "I think we've got the money for us. We, we, well, I, can, I can get this uh, all together." And we were on the plane literally three weeks later. And, and the, the rest of that journey you can read in the book Grail, Grail Bound. Again, it was about the universe, but that. that that took us to, to, to this incredible place in Mothia, Mothia in, in, in southeast of Spain, where we, we and having completed this amazing journey, where we were literally pawns in the hands of the universe. We were sort of puppet, represent, puppet representatives of planet Earth. <laughs> <laughs> but but, we, but uh, at that point, we were then introduced, again, we, we, the others are waking up with crazy things like saying, well, we've got to be here at a certain time. and. Um, and we would go there and someone would pop out and say certain things like, um, oh, well, um, I, I, I was guided to come here. I need to show you something. And, and we were taken to this incredibly old, ancient Bronze Age site. Uh, and, and that led to discovering about this place called La Bastida, which was uh, around 5,000 years old. Uh, it was... Uh, the Argaric nation there, they built this huge city. It was, the, it was the largest mainland Bronze Age city in Europe. And it was on a small hill in the middle of nowhere, not on a trade route, not near water, it wasn't the highest mountain around. And the archaeologists were just baffled. And it had huge fortifications around it. Uh, and, they, and, and they found the, the items there matched uh, similar things found on the other side of the Mediterranean, on, on, the, on the eastern Mediterranean. So the, the, the people had traveled and migrated all this way to this tiny place inland uh, in, in southeast Spain now. And it was connected to where this node was. And um, it was that point when we started tracking the energy lines backwards. To, and they went, and one, one pair went north up through Spain and France and, and that. So my mapping is just now be mapping the, these energy lines. Um, but that then led us to this incredible connection with the Knights Templar. We found so many of these uh, Knights Templar uh, places of prayer, both large and small, like like, like uh, Chartres Cathedral, Rocca Mador, Monson, uh, and they were on these energy line intersections, on the really big energy line intersections. In fact, even, even just recently, I mean, it's quite unbelievable. There's, there's a lady that came to our, our, our uh, 
a gathering in Oliver's Castle just last autumn for the, the, the autumn equinox harmony. Um, and um, she just went back to Spain and said, is there anything near me uh, that I can meditate over here? And I just had a quick look on the map and I saw this intersection that I knew it was there, but I hadn't really investigated it. So I started zooming in to see if there was anything there which she could go to. And up pops this ruins of an old monastery right where the intersection is. And I started digging in and hardly anyone knows about this monastery. And yet it's it it was it was a 13th century Cistercian monk monastery. Now the Cistercian monk Bernard of Saint Clair, Saint Clair, uh, Bernard of Clairvaux actually was one of the founding members of the Templars. And and um, said <laughs> before it was a Cistercian monastery, it was it was a place where the Templars used to pray and meditate. Uh, and it was again on one of these intersections. And this is hardly known about. Uh, but but back then we found out this this connection to another incredible place called Caravaca de la Cruz uh, uh, and the, and the, the sanctuary, sanctuary there, which is on top of the hill. And again, this was an old Templar uh, chapel. And um, from there on, I mean, you, we, we found this, this window there, which had been blocked up and it had these, all these crazy esoteric symbols around it with this meaning that no one had ever discovered or, or, or translated properly before. And it was on this really big intersection of energy lines. And, um, so that led to the connection with, with finding a church chapel in, in, in Monstone in France and my Holy Grail documentary, uh, which has nearly got half a million hits, which is nice, talks about the, these three places, the, the Bronze Age city, the, the, the Templar window with all its enigmatic symbols, and then this church in Monstone in the south of France, which has got a ceiling, which is like 40, 50 foot up in this, this small Templar chapel, which is just the most incredible experience I've sent people there, and they've come away completely shocked at the energy and, and the sound mm -hmm. and singing it. And on the ceiling of this chapel are all these really deep esoteric Templar symbols. And, 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 and at the time, nobody knew about this, really. No one even looked at it. But I, I looked at these symbols, and they, well, they're node shapes. They're changing energies around a node. So these people knew about these energies. Um, so that, that, that led off to the connection with the Templars and... Um, so, so you can see the, the, the curiosity growing all the time and uh, at, at that point um, you, you asked about the emperor dragons and I think the most mm. significant thing about that was uh, when, when we monitor these things we notice these energies and their frequencies changing over time um, but in 2017 everything changed um, uh, one, one person, Tim, who came to Spain with me, contacted me and said, uh, have you seen what's going on with the lions? And I'm saying, what? He said, go and check them. And so I, I looked and I thought, oh, my God, they're twice as wide. All the lions were twice as wide as they were before. So I sent a message out to several people I know and said, can you check the lions and confirm what you find? And we're getting messages. What's going on? What's happening? And um, so... Uh, that then kicked off uh, the next harmony period we had tended to ended up being um, a bit longer than three quarters of a day. It became a day and a half and then it became three days and then it became six days. So this length of harmony when all the lines four times a year were moving side to my side, that was that was getting shorter. That was getting longer. And we're now at 12 days long. This harmony period is now 12 days long. And it, it's probably be December 24 when we're going to have full all year round harmony uh, with, these energy lines will all be one frequency Every, so instead of having all the different groups we're just going to have one fundamental frequency so if we kind of have to look back now well what's generating this frequency what why why are these vibrations coming to the surface uh, and what are they and what's making them and um but that that story again can be read in grail bound but uh it, essentially uh the, the most logical thing was it had to be coming from the center of the earth and if vibrations are coming from the center of the earth the only thing we could think of that was doing it was the inner core which was solid that was sitting inside the liquid outer core and the iron and nickel in the inner core is a fantastically good transducer uh, they're used in microphones and speakers and, it, and a transducer converts one form of energy to another so it'll take electromagnetic energy from the outer core uh, and convert it to uh, very, very low frequency vibrations. And, and these spherical vibrations will expand outwards 
and, and, and they'll bounce off uh, all the different density contrasts within the Earth. And, and of course, with the expansion and contraction in the inner core, you're getting these spherical waves, bubbles going out to the surface. And when, when you've got uh, vibrations, you have uh, high pressure and low pressure fronts. And I know it's like underground because you, it, when, when you're working underground, uh, we, we have um, basically mining is not is not easy uh, and there are parts of the time when you, you get what we call bumps bumps are like small earthquakes mine induced quakes you know, and, and you can be underground and get a bump and you can hear it coming like a steam train it tr this sound travels through the rock and it gets louder and louder and louder when you're standing there you just look upwards just to say oh, I better check nothing's going to fall on me and then it goes away, comes through, everything shakes, and it goes away. So this is the big longitudinal waves that, that travel through rock. So we know these vibrations will travel through rock, and, and you can hear them at the audible range. Um, and that's the pressure front. But when you've got these spherical standing waves, the high pressure zones are, form linear features on the Earth, on the Earth's surface. And I think that's what we're picking up when we dow is we're picking up the, the, the linear concentrations of the high pressure zones and uh, so when, when you've got two lines like this and they're moving apart like that and back again it's it's mirroring the expansion and contraction of the inner core uh, and they don't move all the same side like this and that it, it, it and, and of course just like a, a, a loud speaker it can play various frequencies and sounds the inner core is, is playing lots of frequencies but the interesting thing about the inner core acting as a transducer is iron is also an incredibly good mechanical filter. And a, and a mechanical filter filters out some some frequencies. In other words, you won't get the full range of sound. It'll just give you what we call eigen modes, peaks of frequencies in a certain range, and then nothing, and then peaks of frequencies in another range. And this, this is what we were finding with the Earth energies. You'd get you get them at 24 hours, 36 hours, 48 hour frequencies, and you get them at 12 hours and 16 hours, but you've got none at 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, or 22 hours. There are no energy mass frequencies at that, like that at all. Uh, and, and these eigen modes at, down at the microhertz level, these fundamental base frequencies were pumping them out. Of course, at the higher harmonics of these, the octaves and the Pythagorean fifths, you, you're into the audible range. Uh, and this is why when we sing or resin uh, make uh, make uh, sounds with our, our, our musical instruments, uh, and when we hit the precise higher harmonic of the fundamental from, from the, the center of the earth, and we and we sing or chant, that creates resonance with that fundamental frequency. And that, and when when you get that, you taste it, you get this incredible uplifting feeling of everything vibrating. Um, and of course, this is the, the, the sound that people were seeking uh, because that that's the sort of sound that sort of opened all the doors, if you like, to to the connections to the other worlds of spirit, which we can now accept as completely understandable and realistic because <laughs> Ron Pearson's theory explains how intelligence comes behind the universe. And, and when you start looking at what Tesla says and other scientists are, like him are saying that everything is vibration and, and vibration forms light and light forms matter. So the, the ultimate... Uh, uh, the ultimate of everything, and even down at the subquantum level, around the subquantum level, is it's all waves of vibration that generate uh, these these particles on the on the higher quantum level. Uh, and I won't go down into the science there, but uh, of course, if you now think of vibration as not just vibration, but as the connection to the universal consciousness itself, so the, the, the when you connect. And and and, re and and in resonance with your 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 body and the sound, that's directly contact connecting with the the universal consciousness as well. Which is this is the spiritual enlightenment the Templars have discovered. Uh, this is why uh, the healers uh, and, and they, they knew about manifestation. They knew about uh, all these things. And this is this is the secret. This is you have to get onto these en these energy line centers at the right times. And the Templars knew this. This is why they had the their, their cathedrals orientated towards the solstices, like the uh, directions of solstice, and, the, and, and their, their special days were connected to the solar days. And and, uh, and, and this was the ancient pagan religions, which are the, the new religions have sought to try and uh, overcome and stifle and suppress over these years, because they don't want you discovering 
that we're in a we are spiritual beings living a, a, a physical existence and, and, that, and the route to connection is this through our inner spirituality and that's actually really very simple to do if we just come together in groups mm. and and meditate and pray on, on, on the whole time can i can i butt in there <laughs> honestly you've got so much wisdom and knowledge uh, to do with ley lines song lines grid points and um all of that but I've often taken my gong on land in Australia. Um, we've done ceremony and, and drumming and all sorts of things. Have you ever measured before and after on a, a song line or a, a lay line um, how it would have changed it in any way? You know, because I know there are parts of the earth that are in need of more light, should I say, that are, you know, you can, you can walk in places, I know, because straight away I think, oh, you know, you just don't like the feel. So I know there are places that need cleansing and, and things like that. So so have you ever measured anything from people doing, you know, because like we've all been to Stonehenge doing ceremony in Avebury and Glastonbury and, you know, changing frequencies and vibrations? Yeah, yeah, you, you, you can measure the uh, the extent of the, the energy field before and afterwards. It's, it's subjective, really. You need to, to be able to do this and go double blind. Yeah, we do have an effect, but uh, let's not get carried away here. We, we're insignificant little um, mm. insects in this spiritual world, and our effect is, is next to nothing when you look at it. And, and as Jung, Jung tells us, uh, and I, I, when I came across Jung, that was just an amazing synchronicity as well. But uh, he tells us we're tools of the numinous. You know, uh, and not the other way around. So you know, the, the order is over there, not here. And um, we're very much the servant, and need to need to, need to be the servant, and, 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 and to think that way. And, and you, you're very kind to say about the knowledge and the wisdom, but I'm just an accumulation of everybody else's work, which is what happens. Mm. And, and increasingly, we need to get out of the way of that if we want to connect. Um, and, and, and I, I, I won't go down into. And I, I've started these group discussion groups where we study Steiner and and and, uh, and, and Jung's red book images, and, and it's just immense what these people have done. Goethe, mm -hmm. they, they they are, are giants in, in our world, which are just not being studied properly. But when you when you do get bring people together, well, I, well, I would actually mention this as a way forward. This again, I next talk about individual consciousness going to group consciousness. You know, we had a period of time where ego was important to explore, but now in group consciousness, you know, this is, we're already beginning to, to recognize the power of working in groups. But when we, when we, we start realizing each, each person has a part to play. And, and the really interesting thing about groups is that you need different people. You need unique identity and, and respecting each other's identity. Uh, the last thing you want to do is get a group of similar people thinking the same way who are very who, because the group doesn't work. So the, the, the but when you do get a group that works, when you've got all different people, probably you wouldn't people would socially mix with normally. They're, they're, everyone's a bit weird, you know, in some ways. But that's what makes it work. You overcome that, and suddenly you get different perspectives on things. You get it's like they can tap into the subconscious in different ways from you. So when you look at a, an image of, of Jung's images, you can get that wonderful connection with the subconscious and creative ideas and inspiration. But when you do that collectively, you get a three-dimensional perspective of insights from, from the subconscious. And if you're looking for guidance, if we're looking for edging our way forward, it's now almost definitely this is to do with groups, forming dream groups, meditation groups, and, and looking to connect up to, to share what's learned. Because when we start doing that, we're, we're, we're beginning to have huge influence of, of, of uh, people's lives and directions and um in, in a really positive way it's changing people's lives and i think that's what's needed right now we need we need something to to to, to get around and gather around so that uh, people realize that it, the insignificance of, of what life is really all about and that it is not that it's just when you're dead you're dead you know we're in huge life cycles of, 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 of again and again and again where we're learning developing and growing and that's the purpose in fact it's the one thing about life that's common to all life and that's growth so the purpose of life is growth both physically mentally and spiritually and once you begin to realize that you think whoa okay do i want to come back and do all this again or do i want to evolve and, and carry on and then this takes you to the cathars and their view of, of becoming a person 
And of course, Jung was just massively into the Cathars, and he was very much changed over his life from being Orthodox Christian to to the, to, to more Gnostic Christianity. And, and, and um, but that's a that's a subject which is just completely glossed over by the mainstream now, which is trying to plug gaps all over the place at the moment as as, as people are seeking out. Uh, knowledge and wisdom elsewhere from 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 their particular sources. But um, coming back to the uh, what's going on now uh, and and the emperor dragons in 2017, not only did we discover these these lines were widening and that how many times were were extending, um, there was a bit of a shock when we realised that uh, um, another emperor dragon had arrived on Earth uh, and. Um, we needed to look at well, how can that happen? And I talked earlier about the energies source being derived from the outer core and the natural electromagnetism of the Earth. Well, we also have the Sun's energies, and uh, they're getting to the Earth. In particular, it's cosmic energy. With and, and when cosmic energy hits the Earth in the atmosphere, it changes to neutrinos and gamma rays. Uh, and gamma, gamma irradiation is causing huge problems in the world at the moment. People, but we're not discussing that because the sort of problems you get are lung inflammation from radiation. That's why Brazil's having such bad problems with lung inflammation at the moment and lung problems. Uh, but the neutrinos go straight through and impart energy to the inner core, and that adds to the energy and that has expanded. Uh, and, and one of the reasons why, why we get the Type Four lines is they're connected to the sun. But the emperor dragons seem to come from um, more galactic sources. Mm. And this is where it becomes really quite interesting is because if, if you imagine we've had like three suns uh, giving us three emperor dragons, three galactic sources, um, but we can't see those suns that they're too far away, but the, their cosmic energies giving us neutrinos and, and, and it's been projected in these, in these vibrations on the surface. Which are showing up with what we call the emperor dragons but what was happening right now and this is again it's something that really needs to be pushed out a bit more is that our earth's magnetic field is dropping off it's really i mean it's it's five percent per year it is decreasing and, and this earth magnetic field is being driven downwards if you like because of the proximity of the solar system to something called the galactic current sheet which we, we now know we pass through roughly every 12,000 years. And when that happens, this galactic current sheet, which is a mixture of dust, cosmic energy, and plasma, and in the middle of the plasma, there's this uh, a, a reversal zone of positive and negative. And, and this drives uh, pretty much everything uh, that we, we come across with the, how it affects the sun and how it affects the Earth. Uh, and as a geologist, we've, we've known that um, the polar reversals, magnetic reversals, roughly every two or three hundred thousand years on the Earth, and, and you can do that by by measuring paleomagnetism and, and, and the way the uh, ferromagnetic uh, minerals cool. They, they'll cool in position uh, which is orientated towards where the North Pole is. When you do an analysis of rocks, you can see that they're, sometimes these minerals point towards the North Pole, sometimes they point towards the South Pole, which indicates we're going through these magnetic reversals. Um, and, and and when that happens. It, it, well, there's a lot of things that go on, but the, to, for it to happen, the magnetic field drops. And we can take our signs from how it happens from, from the sun. The sun has a, a magnetic field, north, north pole and the south pole, and that switches every, every 11 years on the sun. The north pole and the sun and the south pole actually start coming together on the one side. As the, as the field drops, it, it comes together. And as it comes together, the north pole, they, the other one pops up the other side. And then the reversal continues around, which way can I go? <laughs> and, and it's the same on the Earth. The field's dropping rapidly. I mean, the, the South Magnetic Pole has left Antarctica. I mean, I just couldn't believe I read that. Why isn't, this, why isn't this world news? You know, and then, but, but the magnetic fields which shield us from cosmic energy. So we're getting so much more cosmic energy through. And it's the same thing in space with the interstellar magnetic fields in space. It shields us from cosmic energy from these galactic centers. Mm -hmm. So when you when you haven't got these magnetic fields, cosmic energy gets through. This is why we get suddenly another energy line pops up at Drampa Dragon, because suddenly this, this cosmic energy is getting through to us and being converted to neutrinos. And we had this one which in 2017 
uh, November, December came along, which we ran from the North Pole to the South Pole, which absolutely matched the, the prophecy of the twins in the Hopi Indian uh, 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 Blue Star Katrina prophecy. And that was uh, that the, when the twins arrived, uh, the, the god of uh, the North Pole, uh, Palangahoya, uh, and South Pole, Poganhoya, uh, seven years from that will be the point where uh, there'll be the, the start of the purification. Um, and, and I won't go into the prophecy bit, but it seemed to match the, 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 the uh, and, and the, the god of the North Pole was, or the South Pole was the god of the god of sound, would you believe, as well? Um, <laughs> But, uh, but then after that one arrived, another one arrived, and then and then lastly um, in 2018, the, the, the sixth emperor dragon arrived. So we now have six emperor dragons, uh, six sources of energy now getting through, and it's 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 increased the energies massively in the world, and and there's groups of us who are busily now um, have been working to, to to connect up these these grids with the other grids. And when I'm talking about uh, connecting up grids, and you mentioned about uh, cleaning sites and cleansing sites with sound, I mean, that's a huge, huge area, which is we couldn't do it justice in two hours. But what we discovered with regards to nodes were if you want these energy shapes to work in, uh, uh, as they should, you need symmetry, you need balance, which is what nature tells us anyway, in so many ways. Mm -hmm. and, and when you've got, uh, when you've got equal numbers of these earth energy lines crossing over in one point, um, you end up with what's called a, a cylinder of energy. And this cylinder of energy goes up into the air and down into the ground. Uh, and only when you have a cylindrical cylinder, or pretty much cylindrical, all the little vortices that occur inside, they will combine, just like in water, and, and you'll find a whirlpool, or, or just like in air, you'll find a tornado. You need a containment field for these vortices to become bigger and larger. And as soon as you've got a big enough vortex within the containment field, uh, at the how many times it collapses into a double torus, and that double torus is is is, is now something we see mirrored in life in the universe at the higher level and the small level, and, and because that is the shape where it, it, they're the portals, they're the gates where you can connect to. Uh, they have some phenomenal features that uh, toruses do. Um, essentially, when we hit one vibration, December twenty four. Uh, we're going to have a double torus field with every node, every node all around the world, and and that point is the start of our learning process. It's like the gates are fully formed, the energy is there. When we go there regularly, it, we will have accelerated learning into mm. group consciousness. So, so from that point on, I mean, it's getting exciting now, but um, from that point on, we're going to be, uh, uh, for instance, we're beginning to sense telepathy more easily, we're becoming more intuitive, we're, 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 we're um, empathy is increasing, and, and empathy, by the way, is a big problem in the world for the leaders at the moment, because uh, <laughs> we, we, we can feel lies, uh, and, and feeling lies is, is uh, <laughs> makes it even easier to know we're being lied to, so, um, so this is I just want to break in, I just want to break in now, hey, um, <laughs> just interesting about the magnetic field, because I was looking at the fact that when you have a, the face of the engine, when you take out the um, radiator, you'll see a harmonic balancer. And it's almost like <clears throat> if you get the top of the planet and you look down on it and you can see how the major plates of Australia, Africa and South America, has been spinning out and it's created a, a triangulated spot on the Southern Hemisphere. Now, those three continents all deal in iron ore yeah mm -hmm. and when you start looking at western australia which is just pumping out 250,000 tons of iron ore that has a magnetic field resonance for the southern part of the hemisphere and it gets shipped up into the northern hemisphere to japan and korea and china there must be and a a change in natural magnetic field because you've got all this iron ore that's calibrated to the southern hemisphere going up to the northern hemisphere. It's almost like you get two magnets coming together, north and south, and they get this attraction. Is it possible that <clears throat> that's creating a shift in both the north and south poles? I, I, to be honest, I don't think it's going to be a big enough effect. It will have an effect, but it's a question of how big an effect that is. I think that, I think the 
when, when you start to look at the, the, the galactic nature of the, the power from the plasma, uh, uh, and, and this is to do with the electric universe theory, our, our, our environment is, is, is really controlled and dominated, not by Earth, not even by the sun but by the galactic center and, and 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 that space weather if you like is what the driving drives the changes on our earth more than anything and bigger than anything we can possibly do ourselves so yes it will have a small effect locally um and 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 and, and the people living local to that will, will, will quite possibly notice it um in a variety of ways depending on how sensitive they are but but from, from the point of view of uh us trying to change uh, the magnetic field that's really going on, the big shift that's going on. Um, I, I don't think I don't think um, we're going to be able to to do that in anything we do. Fact, well, I've noticed that every time I've, I've flown up in the northern hemisphere, if I fly Australia through the Middle East and go to the UK, I can arrive at seven o'clock in the morning or six o'clock in the morning. I can go through the whole day without any jet lag. Yeah, but if I come the opposite. From UK to Australia, coming through the Middle East, man, it bulks me up for about a week because I'm going counter cycle to the spin of the bloody planet. Does that have an effect on our own magnetic fields that we we have within ourselves? I mean, birds and other animals you know, do have a magnetic field resonance for navigation. You know, just looking how it actually affects my body. I, I think there's certainly something in, in this. As soon as you take yourself out of what you're used to doing and what you you've evolved to be able to do in a living uh, uh and that is partly to do with the the, the possible traveling in, in in a particular direction around the world um and against time you you, you certainly are going to throw throw your internal clock out your internal uh mechanisms mm -hmm. for it. so yeah absolutely and, and also with regards to locally where you live and where you're used to, you, you'll, you'll be connecting to those energies. And if you're suddenly thrust into completely different energies and you're not ready for it, uh, um, especially when you're tired, that'll affect you as well. Um, Which then leads on to the to your food source, isn't it? So if you're actually getting your food from the earth, whether it's from the, under the ground or above the ground, or you're reaching up for it from a tree, there's obviously there's a, a magnetic field or an energy field or Taurus, as you mentioned, it's a effect on that, so that you become one with that particular. Um... Well, what, what we have to be careful of, really careful of, is is falling for the illusion that matter is real. Uh, and uh, what I mean by that is, uh, you know, if you start looking at, at anything that we're standing on or sitting on or anything like that, what we eat, this is just a collection of molecules with atoms and electrons and particles. But when you dig down into look at what a particle is. It's nothing but energy, and this energy from from Ron's perspective, the current science doesn't explain where this energy comes from at all. But Ron's, Ron's theory suggests that below the quantum level, there's just one final subquantum level where everything is created through this intelligence, and it directs its waves, its vibrations, to peak, and where they peak, just like two 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 waves will hit each other, they'll peak. It'll produce the illusion of a matter particle on a quantum level, and it can produce several different quantum worlds all within the same space but on different frequencies so you've got you've got essentially several quantum worlds all existing on different frequencies in exactly the same area but it's all an illusion it's all energy it's only mm. our minds that tune into the, the particular matter frequency world that we're in that makes us think that we're living in a physical solid world so it, the, that even stems down to electromagnetism which ultimately is light and, and light is generated as we know by vibration so and, and uh so we we can very easily get trapped into thinking that that uh the things like electromagnetism uh, are real when really they're just nothing more than symbols of signs of change and, and what's changing now is the way our minds tune into all these different worlds and this veil of illusion is coming down and we're going to be seeing all these worlds soon. and it's going to be quite shocking and some people are already seeing this because that tuning element in, in our mind uh, will be expanded massively to be able to be sensitive and aware to all these different frequencies mm. because all the frequencies are becoming one frequency so for us to think that the the driving forces are, are electromagnetism and, and light and, and, and uh, other physical forces 
we're, we're going to be finding the true nature of reality is really very different. And, and our ability to, 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 to do things will be changed. And you only have to look back at the past and see, uh, you know, how, how the, the, some of these people in our ancestors built, uh, for instance, these, these uh, 100 ton boulder walls, which are perfectly polygonal masonry, which fit perfectly together. And, and, and they have this sort of molding look to it as well. It, it, and this is found in, in, in Peru, it's found in, we find polygonal uh, and, and very well good put together masonry in Egypt, in Greece, in, 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 in Italy, in, in Japan, all around the world. Our ancients had abilities and techniques which we, we, we still can't explain today. And yet how? When we're constrained with with matter being solid and heavy and we can't do anything with it and we, we have a limited capacity with our minds to be able to think and, 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 and adapt and, and work with these things i think we'll find that uh it won't be long before these new skills and abilities which are latent right now uh, uh, will, will be uh, on the rise again so to, to answer your questions yes there's, there's all those sort of possibilities but i think there's something bigger at play now mm. So let's come back to your dowsing. I mean, were you using um, a tree bro, or you were, were you using uh, metal rods, or you using um, wooden yeah, rods? Yeah, good, good rods? question. Good question, because it really has nothing to do with the rods. In fact, I tell people to to say the rod is going to be your crutch. Mm. I mean, you, you, could, you you just it's it, it is between a connection between your conscious mind and your subconscious mind. It's about how do you connect the two up? How do you get information back? And, and, and there's, a, there's a friend of mine who's a dream detective who, who, uh, who has symbols that he's preset so that he knows if he dreams certain symbols, his subconscious mind can give him the information back through his dreams with those symbols. And that's why he can, he can dream where he's going to be going the next day, where he's going to see him the next day. And he's, he's worked for MI5, MI6 and, and the American Intelligence Services because he's incredibly accurate. And he's, he's been tested at the University of Arizona. Chris Robinson's his name. But anyway... We're creating the same symbols with our rods. Straightforward is yes, or is no, sorry. Then across the chest is, 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 is yes, and that's no, yes. So it's a simple yes, no. You can use a pendulum and, and, and get different movements to mean yes and yes. Yeah. And some people will be clockwise for yes, and sometimes it'll be clockwise for no. But it's how we, we, we program our minds to, to get this information back. So we can use a, a stick. And a stick which will, will will spring upwards will be our yes or it will not do it that'll be our, our no you can use a, a pendulum you can use a rod i just use one one coat hanger um but uh, you can use your fingers like this you can move your fingers like that where you slightly extra pressure and they stick that's your yes okay so it, it's it's about building up the symbolism so your subconscious can give you the information back that you're asking for what you, you hope to are you know so you, you there's this important things about uh, moving from focus state to aware state so you, you ask your question in a focus state then you get out of your head lose your ego create the uncertainty just just ask to get some sort of truth rather than the answer to your question and and then and then the other big thing is you have to, to not care and, mm -hmm. and and so you set up the way you connect with your subconscious mind through your dowsing and, and, and from the point of view of water and earth energies what you're doing is you're asking to, for your subconscious uh, to connect your energy field with the energy field that you're looking for. Maybe it's water, maybe it's oil, maybe it's gold uh, or, or a particular frequency of earth energies. Now, you know that the water frequency has a vibrational field, it has an electromagnetic field, it has a gravitational field. This collective field 30 feet below the surface will be felt by your own collective field, your gravitational field, electromagnetic field, and your, and your vibratory field. So you know like waves interact. We can't see them, but all you have to do is like, well, just show me if I'm interacting with the water, uh, any water underneath me. Mm. And, you, and you, then you get out of the way and the answer for, will be yes or no, if you programmed yourself to the frequency of that water in the first place. So what, what you're getting is, is, is uh, and by the way, that's why water and earth energies are, are, are much easier to douse because our bodies have uh, water and, and energy. And, and it's easier for us to connect to the subconscious to give us information like that. Uh, so it, it doesn't matter what you use. And, and, and in fact, I, I, I took a group of shamans from America uh, around Bath, right? I run dowsing courses and uh, they chucked their rods away after, well, they didn't, they gave them back to me. <laughs> they, chucked, they didn't need them after an hour and a half because what we've done is we associated 
the feeling of a particular frequency of energy line with an area in their body and they gave it a color. So they could turn their bodies on and when they walked into an energy line, they would get a color and a feeling in a particular part. So they knew they were in, in a certain frequency of energy line. Yeah, because you are the pendulum, aren't you? When you're in tune, you you know, you just know, you can feel. But I was going to ask, um, we went to Flinders Rangers um, in South Australia or um, to grid point 44. So that's apparently where all the lines meet in one point. Is that correct? Well, the, the, the first thing is you, you couldn't get all the lines meeting in one point. There's just so many energy lines. Mm. And I, mm. when we talk about the rarest lines, the type five lines, you've got two pairs already that run across uh, Australia. Uh, and um, you, you might have to put that slide up because uh, there's uh, the rainbow, the rainbow serpent that runs across, and then there's another one that runs across pretty much below uh, Darwin up to the top of Queensland. And where they cross is uh, the well-known Uluru, um, mm. and, and that that last that last one, which from Darwin, uh, not Darwin, from Britain, yeah, Darwin, I mean, Perth, sorry, from Perth up to um, was it just below Perth. Up to, up to Queensland. That that that's one that re reappeared. Uh, in, it was one of the three that reappeared in the last few years. Uh, and and uh, that big ceremony they had uh, January last year um, was connecting up those emperor dragons um, at Asaluru. There was the wisdom keepers there did that. Did that. Um, but the the less rare lines are the type four lines. Um, there are about fourteen pairs of lines in the UK to give you an example of that. But then you've got the type three lines, which are much more numerous and the type two and type one lines, again, a lot more of them. So you're, you're talking about a huge number of smaller lines. I call smaller because it's, they're narrow widths and, and they have slightly higher frequencies. Um, so there's, there's, there's no one place where you'll have all the lines. For instance, at Alru, you, you're going to have, you know, probably a hundred pairs of lines all crossing over there, but, but that that's mirrored in in uh, seven or eight other places around the world on land anyway uh so that i call those first order nodes um so if, if you if you've got a place like flinders and i don't know that very well they're almost certainly be very very powerful energy lines there the type four lines probably um, um and uh the question more important is is whether or not there's the right configuration of lines at a particular point because we haven't got symmetry mm -hmm. you're not going to get the energy formations and, and having said that, there's a particular, there's one or two types of frequencies of lines which don't sit very well with some humans. They, they, they can be quite jarring. It's like hearing a, a, the nails being drawn across a blackboard. It's a sound which is horrible. And, and living across those for a long period of time aren't very nice. And, and, and that, that's, a, that's a, a, an issue because we, we found that certain groups of more devious, um, pernicious people tend to like working with those frequencies. And we mm. have to work exactly with that. So um, I don't know if that answers your question, but yeah. So there, obviously, in your books, there's a lot more information because <laughs> I I haven't read any of your books. I only came across you um, since I've been back in the UK. Um, and people, you know, when I said I was looking for people that are like yourself, dreaming the new dream and and in enlightening humanity. Um, so yeah, so I would I would like to get your books and have a read through. So that would be a good starting point for people to have more of awareness of um, ley lines, dragon lines, and all sorts of things like that. And where where places are to go and be, you know, because like you can sit in some some places and the energy, you, you know, it's just you know I've gone to so many places. Oh my god you just feel such a sense of peace in different places and it's like you don't want to move you're just totally at one in in that energy and and, and i'm glad you mentioned that that last part I mean, at the moment i'm i'm beginning to get a, a website a new website for uh enabling people to to find where these special places are near to where they are um and then it, it'll be an interactive website where people can form groups for meditations at these local sites it'll 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 have an, because it's been, it takes a long time to find all these sites. Um, mm. but, but there's going to be a place where you can go to, and, and eventually more and more information will be added to it. So you'll know where to go to find these places and people will be able to help do that. Um, but, but thank you for mentioning the books. Um, on my website, roryduff.com, there's also plenty of uh, information, which is for free. There's videos, there's uh, 
PDF downloads. I, I, I do a post every every week to, on social media sites, um, and, and and there's newsletters. There's newsletters on my on my website, past newsletters, which will keep you going for months. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, 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 they'd actually come to the point. Actually, uh, and this is we're talking about coming to uh, dreaming the new dream. You know, it's like going into a library, like New York Library, and there's like thousands and thousands of books, and you ask, well, which one should I read? How do you decide what, what to do next? You can't read them all. You literally can't. So, you know, it, it isn't about just reading all my books. It's not going to be, you know, that's 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 not what you should be doing. You should be guided through mm. synchronicity to to think, ah, oh, that's what I need to do next. Mm. Uh, and, and, and and after a while, when you meditate at these meditate and you understand that you can manifest pretty much anything you want, it doesn't mean you say you should. So all you're left with is, well, if I'm supposed to be learning and my one fundamental reason for life is to learn, develop and grow, then how can I do that best? And more for one point, how do I help others do that? And then they say, well, just just show me the synchronicity and help me explore it. Because as mm -hmm. soon as you start doing that, you're guided down into just a phenomenal world where everything starts helping you. Just the, 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 you're going with the flow and and... and and people come into your life with innovation, which is relevant and timely, and, and, and other people, things will pop up. Um, and it's just mind blowing. I mean, and, and the, the symbolism, how I discovered, I mean, I've known, you know, known about Jung's work for, for some time, I never studied it. But when I, when I, when I suddenly came across his, his images in his red book, and, and saw the connection with geobiology, and that's what I'm studying now, geobiology, which is how life affects the earth affects life sorry and, and and that's literally how the earth is resonating and, and changing its resonance and how it's affecting us in, in, in a variety of different ways and Jung, Jung is just uh, he's ta he's found ways of tapping into the subconscious and and in, he was a prophet he, was, he knew he was a prophet he said it, it, it nearly made him go mad but he hadn't realized he was a prophet he wouldn't have actually gone on to doing the rest of his studies and, and, and developed his psychoanalysis work. But he also predicted a snippet of this universal prophecy, like Goethe did with his with his uh, the, the fairy tale and, and the green snake uh, 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 crossing the, between the land of the senses and the land of the spirit. There's the snippets of this universal property everywhere. And, and this is the thing which drives him more than anything else is because we have this potential evolution of consciousness sitting there, which we can we can get onto. All we need to do is, is to come together at sacred sites local to us and meditate in groups and connect with these energies. Let the energies guide us. The the, the Gnostic Gospels talk about the, the 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 Garden of Eden story in a completely different way. The the the, the serpent isn't evil. The serpent is synonymous and, and, and a symbol for these earth, earth energy lines. The serpent was known as the instructor, the teacher around the tree of knowledge. Uh, and, and it was the instructing principle. There's a male and female instructing principle that come up through you and connect the Kundalini forces that connect with the earth energies and, and, and the energies from the sun. And when we do that, we're getting all this information coming through. Right. Yeah. There, while you're, um, I'm going to put in there, one of our listeners, Andrew, and I keep seeing you, you he puts comments up, but um, I can't take on board all the comments. So perhaps Jeff like to, I know there's a couple of questions that you'd asked or mentioned if um, perhaps you could share that. I wanted to know if um, the ancient pyramids crack or manipulate the, um, the ley lines and are the dolmens, which you, you find up in Russia and that, um, are they also um, on the ley lines as well? Yeah, uh, let's take the pyramids. Uh, the pyramids at Giza, they're on a fourth order node. There are, are two pairs of type four lines uh, crossing over there along with lots of others. The, the pyramids themselves don't manipulate the lines. Uh, the, the main function of the pyramid is to anchor the node in place so that people can conduct ceremonies on the node inside the chambers. Uh, and they weren't uh, um, chambers for burials, but, but for Egyptian uh, uh, pharaohs, they were very much uh, chambers for incubation incubatory journeys uh to these other worlds um the pyramid's main function was to keep that uh, energy node where it was uh, manipulating energies is, is very simple though you you 
you, you just commit atrocities and sacrifices uh, on them uh, and the extreme negative emotion will main, make the lions move away, which is why the, you find in, in, in places like Chichen Itza in Mexico, they, 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 the new dominating power with their new religions would, would, would uh, break down the pre-existing pagan religions by creating sacrifices on top of these pyramids and that depowered the area massively because suddenly you don't have the symmetry of the energies and you have a tic-tac-toe crossing as opposed to a point where all the energies come together to create a cylinder of energy and if you haven't got the cylinder of energy you haven't got the torus you haven't got the torus you haven't got the connection to the other side or or, or a clear connection so the, the the pyramids were very very powerful places and but, but the place itself funnily enough is not the only function of power it's just the connection with people you need people and places, conscious and conscious interaction, interaction at these sites. That's what creates the fire. You can have the most powerful site in the world, but if no one goes there, it does not do too much. Or you can have a small, wonderful type four, type one vortex, beautiful, delicate energies, very often connected with small chapels and, and divine feminine. You get people regularly meditating there, praying there, and they can blossom out make a huge difference over the area and i know that's subjective i can't i can't i can't measure it but we do know um there's anecdotal evidence for instance that a, a, a group of people in, in the uk back in the 80s that did, did some work in brighton and worked at the fountain in brighton and uh cleansed the energies or worked on the energies or meditated on the energies there and and they there are good police records to show afterwards that crime dropped significantly in that area mm -hmm. And that was a fountain project. So we, we can make a big difference, definitely. Um, so th th that was the pyramids. So m energies can be manipulated, but they're by us and human interaction, not not the actual pyramids as well. And there may be other functions in the pyramids. But uh, and the other one about dolmens um, tend to be uh, uh, several functions with dolmens. Again, they can anchor lines in certain ways. They can they can keep them from moving away. But they are also waystones to show where lines are heading. Um, one of the things we found is uh, there's a big connection with pilgrimages around the world to ancient sites. Uh, if you take Camino Way uh, that goes to Santiago de Compostela, which is one of the, the top five Christian sites in the world, uh, three of them are in Spain, by the way, and one of them was that Caravaca de la Cruz, which hardly anyone knows about. But uh, there were many lines energy lines going to the node at, at Santiago de Compostela and the pilgrims would walk the lines. The ancient Celts would migrate along these straight lines. And and and, and in Santiago de Compostela, they, they, they have this scallop shaped shell as, as a sign. If you look at a scallop shell, it's like a, a, a half circle with these ribbed lines coming across to the umber in the middle. And those ribs of the of the scallop shell actually are signifying the different energy lines as they come towards the center. And you'll think of places like Avery, they, they will be following uh, Dharmans, that's their route, uh, and all the tribes would come together probably once every four years or four times every year, I don't know. They would all come to congregate at their sacred site, and they would follow the lines in a sort of pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. So Dharmans, I think, are, 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 can be used inside a sacred site, but they can use, be used, and I often find when I'm tracking them, you'll find a, a lone stone uh, in the middle of nowhere that, that the line will run through. Mm -hmm amazing gosh so much i didn't want to interrupt you <laughs> you Go know on. you've got a, no no but you've got such a flow of information that that i'm happy just to sit and listen but, <laughs> but obviously yeah no but thank you for sharing it's been um amazing yeah i've loved listening and understanding more and you know what i loved you mentioned about synchronicity and i know for me lately synchronicity has been happening and happening and i think when you recognize it think, oh that's synchronous it happens more and more and when you've got that awareness then it's just like you're on that treadmill then of things opening up more and more i, I do need to mention about synchronicity though and, and it is connected with this path of learning and development this the cathar route of trying to become a better person it, it, it you know there's a, it, it can be called the grail path a vocational path and, and and jung calls it the path of individuation it's it's the birthing of the divine child within, within you but this is this is all, all a path which is not just all bed and roses they're going to lead you to challenges on purpose 
because that's the way they, they develop and change you and, 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 and get around your weaknesses or your uh, or your or, or, or the areas you need to be improved upon, if you like, in, in this development. Um, and, and I can't really go into it now, but I think that mankind is going on its own collective journey. Mm. And we're, we're, we are being subjected to the same sort of uh, abyss, uh, darkness, the, the gap between the worlds, if you like, where we're being tested so that we can become better uh, and, and more prepared, if you like, for what we're about to go through, which is this amazing transformation. Um, so it's a difficult path. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Jung said the path of individuation, individuation is the hardest path you could ever choose in life. But there are a few who are awakening now. Who are choosing now to take that hard path because they know that's the right route that ultimately means we can help everybody else so we don't need everybody we don't need everybody at all we just need one percent of, of, of the world to and we're already doing this that we're already uh, there's one percent of the world who are regularly meditating and praying wanting world peace wanting the world to come better but the, the, for me the key is to do it at the right time in the right place and that's getting people to these these symmetrical sacred sites and, and embracing the change uh, and, and yeah, being guided by, by what comes through from the subconscious, the numinous. Mm. Mm. Right. Well, I think on that note, um, <laughs> we could go on and on and on. So I think, um, yes, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and knowledge. And um, yeah, it's just been really, really awesome. Well, it's very kind of you. And thank you, Jeff and Rina, for, for allowing me the time to to talk as much as <laughs> sorry i just uh... no no it's absolutely fine that's what you know that's what we're here for to to help others to learn about different things i mean I, you know i've only been doing this a couple of months and i've had some amazing speakers and you know everybody's got unique gifts in different ways and it's, it's all about sharing your passion what you're good at and how you can help other people that's a really important thing you say we have to respect each other's journeys and, and, and help each other to have those journeys because collectively we need everybody to go on their journey because then we can then we can come together and and uh and uh as a community we don't have like eight blacksmiths and 10 carpenters and no cooks <laughs> that actually leads me on to um getting uh david um Beck. He's Australia's foremost uh, engram uh, proponent. So, you know, he just listens to you and he can actually tell you whether you're a one or a nine. It's, and um, so he gets invited to come into businesses that he might be um, advertising agencies. You know? So he knows there are seven. It's all about creativity and the open floor plan and they can come in their own hours and stuff. But if you get someone who's a five and make them the CEO, that's someone who's like MI5 and MI6 have got little security things and you only go in and you only get so much information. So that type of individual is not going to work for that particular organization. He's an interesting guy. So um, engrams, it's called. Um, yeah. and I suppose yeah. that's bringing people together and what you're saying to create community, isn't it? Well, well, we're learning about the, the power of 12 at the moment. Uh, Jean-Michel wrote this great book called 12 Tribe Nations, and it, it touches on the importance of 12 being found in cultures all around the world. And, and, and what we're discovering in group meditation is that individually there are almost 12 different functions or combinations of functions. And when you come together and you each know the function you should be doing, for instance, balancing the amount of energy coming down with the amount of energy coming up, uh, there's a function for working with, with, with the rotation of energy is a function for anchoring the energy i mentioned anchoring before and there's a way of working with energy we're still discovering but the, it, within groups of 12s and and uh, i met with an amazing polynesian lady um over in carlsbad last year in february uh, in california and, and we we had to meet to discuss what she knew from and she came from a long line of uh, of uh, shamanic priestess from the island of guam uh, and, and she was talking about ceremonies that, that they would do uh, and the importance of, of the roles and, 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 and what we play. Uh, so we're just still discovering that, uh, more information about that. But yeah, that that was just 12. But the, the, yeah, what, you're, what chap, your chap's on about is, uh, is, is spot on. Uh, we all are different for a purpose. Yeah. Mm. Well, perhaps we could ask you to come back another time later on in the year next year and share more information 
Okay, well, let's see how this one goes first. You might not get yeah. me. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. Yep. No, no, yeah, all good. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeffrey. Okay.